Hey Dan, the practitioner here again. Um, don't mind the jacket, I'm just about on my way out. Um, listen, I took a look at your Lowe's uh, Christmas tree ad uh, 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 response here, and I have to admit that it is actually one of the funnier things I've seen this week. Um, you know, it, it, um, it, it does take a bit of a pressure off the exams. Anyway, um, your approach on it is actually one of the more refreshing ones I've seen to um, a, lot of these, uh, a lot of these issues. Um, God. I mean, some of the other uh, responses which I have heard uh, on um, some of the other responses I've heard on um, on uh, on Christmas and and this whole thing in general, um, I should mention again a little bit about my background. Um, I deliberately spend my time constantly going over atheistic and agnostic arguments as an agnostic, uh, purely for the purposes of uh, of being the troubleshooter, if you will. Um, you know, constantly, you know, sort of like the coach from behind the sidelines, going like good form, but you could improve your play here. And one of the things which I've come across, which is a really, really annoying thing I have to repeat, I have to take care of over and over again, is this um, case of people going like, oh, well, uh, well, uh, we, who cares about your faith? Because guess what? It's based on a fairy tale. You know, I mean, like, I've, I've heard, you know, um, often, and, and the thing is that what's, what's often about is the fact that um, in the area where I live, um, you know, or at least the area, one of the areas where I used to live, um, the Christian contingent where I was was a tad more fundamentalist than most. So uh, where I was working, the I mean, my family weren't, but you know, a lot of the people I knew were. And um, you know, anyway, so basically, like, whenever whenever you suggested something about uh, about uh, you know about uh, about like uh, the the family shopping or the uh, or um, or stuff like that. I mean, um, you get you get a large chunk of people who'd be uh, who'd be like, oh, it, ha it has to be about Christmas, and everybody who doesn't believe in it's damned to hell. And uh, you know, we're gonna we're we're gonna go out and pick it. Yeah, ironically, they were doing exactly what Stephanie considered to be a waste of time. They'd actually go and pick at a store like that until the uh, owners changed their minds. Uh, anyway, I kind of got annoyed with those type. But the other side of the group were the type who uh, I actually saw popularized in a magazine a little while back um, where a group of um, postmodernist uh, thinkers uh, and feminists actually tried to uh, tried to trim away from Santa Claus they didn't want his hat they didn't want his beard they didn't want the boots they didn't want the uh, uh, they didn't want the, uh, the the overweightness um, they didn't want the big belt uh, or the fur um, there was a whole bunch of things I mean for example, let me run you through a couple of the things. And this is the sort of thing which I'm having to deal with in a large chunk of the atheistic contingent who are trying to uh, debunk Christian, uh, you know, trying to debunk uh, Christianity and the like, uh, or just debunk uh, Christmas in general. Um, now, mind you, of course, this is only a small group of people I'm having to deal with. Uh, fortunately, they're a minority, and hopefully, they're and hopefully this type of attitude about this won't necessarily spread. Uh, so this way, uh, I won't have more trouble to deal with. Uh, you know, I won't have more arguments I have to try to correct. But anyway. Um, this particular article, which was actually submitted by uh, someone who I happen to know here on YouTube, um, went as follows. They took a photo of Santa Claus, and they basically said um, the beard was too patriarchal and, uh, dom and suggested male authority, and therefore Santa should shave. His big belly was promoting obesity in uh, kids in North America, and he should lose weight. The red was the color of blood, and that was too inappropriate for children to see. The belt was made of leather, which was talking about oppression of animals. Um, I think there was an influence uh, in relation to PETA in there somewhere, as well as the fur lining that was uh, the, the, the white fur lining that was on the hood and the coat. Uh, as well, the boots, uh, Santa's boots, were uh, suggested that they get rid of Santa's boots as they, because they were too militaristic. And this is the sort of, and, and what's funny about this is the fact that this is the standard line of thought this seems to be coming out of, um, you know, of large chunks of people, uh, you know, of large groups of people, who are um, trying to, you know, do a lot of this debunk work. And anyway, um, long story short, I think your video is actually one of the best ones to have dealt with this particular issue, um, you know, and just to have dealt with the large chunk of this in general, um, you know, you're taking a much better approach to both Christians and ag and atheists than I am. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm actually going to be paying more attention to your videos because I think I might actually be able to learn something from you on how to better approach people. So that having been said, um, I've automatically subscribed to you. Um, subscribe to me as well because I've got a shitload of science stuff you might be interested in and uh, as well some uh, cool political stuff. Um, you know, there's, I think there's a few issues which the presidential candidates haven't really dealt with. Uh, number one of which is this um, whole concept of... Uh, you know, of, uh, of the whole creation versus evolution creeping back into the schools again. 
Um, I mean, the thing is, you know, if, if there's if this is a fight that's going to be, a, you know, a major issue, uh, my concern is, well, why not just uh, put a religious studies class in, which covers world religions, put a, a philosophy of critical thinking class, and the reason I suggest a philosophy of critical thinking class is because I really don't think kids are being actually exposed to uh, the critical thinking, uh, the logical fallacies, like the ones you talked about uh, that Stephanie had in her, in her video, uh, in, her, in her response and that sort of thing. I mean, you overlook, you know, you were willing to overlook them to be respectful and all, but um, the thing is that, you know, in my, you know, from what I've looked at, the high school curriculum doesn't even cover this at all. I mean, uh, at best, maybe a couple of English classes might cover media literacy, but I mean, that's that's about it. You know, um, uh, there's not really a, a way of, you know, of, uh, of of learning how to apply the sort of you know what they're learning in school in everyday life there's you know there doesn't seem to be a a, a, a forum if you will or or a better teaching method you know except for the odd school or the odd teacher who does this here and there there doesn't seem to be an organized format of trying to transfer the knowledge that you get in school into practical situations in daily life and uh, you know I posted this back in the 2004 presidential elections and I posted it again for the 2008s but still the presidential candidates don't seem to have answered this one so anyway, yeah, um, just my thoughts. And also as well, um, I don't know what it's like down in the U.S. Up here in Canada, we don't particularly have uh, that much in the way of, again, like I said, of critical thinking, um, you know, education and the like here in Canada. And as an agnostic, um, you know, as an agnostic and what you seem to be like a fairly intelligent person and quite well informed, you said you were better informed on the political candidates, uh, I was watching another video, than uh, most, of your, um, most of your classmates are. And my question is, um, this is my question to you, and perhaps maybe you could give me some feedback on this. Um, what is your experience of high school uh, down in the U.S., more specifically in the way uh, that, uh, of how teachers, you know, teach logic or teach, uh, you know, do they teach the, uh, not only teach the material, but do they teach the material in a way that you can learn to apply it in your daily lives or, or, or that you, you see a practical use for it or, you, or, you know, like you, you get some indication as to what it might actually, you know, as to how, as to how this applies to li in life. Anyway, that's just my question. Um, do leave me a comment. Do post me a video. Do send me a message, what have you. Um, anyway, I'll be watching you. Hopefully, you'll be watching me, and hopefully, we can uh, talk a little bit more in detail on some, of these on some of this stuff. Anyway, that's just my beef. I'm the practitioner. Keep up the good work on the videos. Toodles.